Hey everyone, and welcome to take two of our conversation with Vance Aircraft about their new final size RV-10 kits. Thank you, Greg, for taking the time to sit down and join me again. I really do appreciate it and having the time to go over some of the questions that I've been getting and I had and I've seen from others about the new um, RV-10 kits that y'all are putting out. So, Yeah, glad to be here. Thanks for having us again. Excellent. Thank you so much again for taking the time. Let's go ahead and get started. I think that one really good place to start is that I had mentioned, because I'd heard other people referring to it as final drilled holes that were being put into the components, but right. you had made mention that that's not actually what you call them and they had a different term for it. And maybe you could go over to explain why these aren't, you know, final drilled holes like people sure. are referring to them. Yeah, no problem. So actually, um, none of our parts, when we ship them, have had a single hole drilled in them. So the term drilled doesn't really apply to the parts in terms of how they're delivered. They're all punched. So on a punch press, big sheets of metal are taken apart, and the holes aren't drilled with a spinning drill. They're actually punched with a punch and die. So it's a very sharp die that punches a hole through. So we call them final-sized, pre-punched, matched hole is the term that we use, right? So final drilled, there's there's match drilled and there's final drilled. Match drilled is when you have a hole in one piece of metal and then you have one or other pieces of metal underneath it and you use that hole as a guide and you match drill through the other material that doesn't have a hole in it yet. That's match drill. Yes. Final sizing or final drilling a hole would be if you have a pre-punched matched hole but not final sized hole, then you would take a reamer or a bit, 30 or 40 bit, whatever it is you're using for the part, and you would uh, you would upsize the hole to final size. So the to kind of cut to the chase, the parts that we're delivering, the change that we're talking about is, is a change from pre-punched, matched hole, undersized, not final sized, changing that to pre-punched, matched hole, final size holes. In other words, the difference is you don't have to take the bit or the ramer and run it through the holes to upsize them to the final size. That's what's different. That's what's already done on the new parts that we're delivering. And if I remember correctly from when Ryan joined us before, the the change comes because of these new, uh, I think he said Trump dies that you have and that's right. what allows the holes to get punched now to the final size and leave it with the very clean edge where it's it, there's no burr there, there that's what requires no deburring because of these new dies so uh that's part of it so um trump t-r-u-m-p-f is is a brand of uh, machinery uh, and so the punch presses that we were talking about uh, are Trump machines. And the tooling on that is what allows us to – so some changes in the tooling, the way that we sharpen it, um, but also the electronic, the, the electronic design uh, and all of these different things, uh, design, tooling, mach new machines – things that allow us to bring everything in and have a, even tighter tolerances so things can be even more exact and can be made that way. Oh, that's um, really cool. So, you know, we did that on the RV-14 and on the RV-12. And the RV-10 wasn't originally done that way. So the other thing you have to have is you have to have time to throw at it, right? So, um, you know, we've recently invested not only in new punch presses and technology, but also in more people, right? So we have... Uh, you know, we added three people to our engineering team here this year, which is really unusual. Oh, I mean, wow. It's, uh, it was a, a big people investment to on top of some of the machine reinvestment that we're making on CNC and uh, presses and uh, mills and lathes and things like that. And so um, one of our engineers, uh, Ryan, story, different Ryan, <laughs> was, able, <laughs> was able to, one of the, one of the, the new engineers um, was able to make a project Set us, uh, have allocate some project time and was able to do the work that it took to change the uh, the part drawings, the design, uh, and then we got to generate new code and be able to actually make those on the punch press and, and then deliver them out. So the end result for a builder is um, is there's not as many steps as, as, as you're familiar with of put it together, click it all together, right? And the nice thing is, is with matched hole, everything's self-jigging. You don't have to build a jig for the RV-10. Like, you 
you may not even know what a jig is for an RV10, right? Because it doesn't <laughs> exist. You know, if you build an RV3 or 4 or 6 or something, you know what that is. But <laughs> the, the what this allows you to do then is to, uh, to skip the steps where it's put it together, uh, drill all the holes up to final size. So, and that's final drill, final size drilling is what that is, right? That's where the drilling term comes in. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you, you do that, you're drilling it to final size, um, take it apart, deburr all those holes, put it all back together yeah. and then start assembly. So, um, there's a lot of holes in an RV 10. Um, you may have noticed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of rivets. And so there's quite a bit of doing that. The other thing that does for you to a certain extent is, uh, with the really sharp, good, clean tooling and the equipment, when we punch that hole, it's a pretty clean hole. There's not a guarantee that it's a perfect hole, right? Um, so you still need to check for burrs, and you need to okay. deburr where necessary. So we don't want to tell people that deburring is no longer necessary because having a clean, uh, well deburred hole, whether you have to mechanically deburr it or it's already okay, um, is important in terms of longevity and, you know, preventing cracks from starting and, you know, things like that in an airplane structure. So, you know, it's your responsibility to still go through and do that. Um, but you're starting from a much better place, I guess would be the way to say it, when when you get the parts that are pre-punched to that final size. Because if you run, you run a drill bit through, a, a drill bit through those to upsize them, uh, you're, you're going to get burrs. It's kind of the way it works. If you run a reamer through it, then, you know, maybe, maybe not. That's certainly the cleaner way to upsize holes. Certainly would recommend using a reamer for upsizing holes um, okay. if, if you are doing that. So you kind of touched on it a little bit about what went into being able to provide the final drilled RV10 kits that you had some new engineers that came in. You had to go in and redo some of with the, the drawings yep. and, um, and then go in with the coding to handle, I guess, with the new punches that you talked about. Right. Um, and... So this kind of, I guess, leads into a little bit then with the next question where it, people were talking about when are these final sized pieces going to start being available yeah. and are you doing them with in like the entire kit? So where it would be the entire empennage kit would arrive this way, the entire wing kit, the entire fuselage kit, et cetera. Right. So it's a phased approach to rolling them out. So, um, so to answer your second question first, no, it won't be an entire kit that it's not a, it's not a one zero on off kind of thing. So, um, it'll be part by part, uh, okay. and it'll be across all of the different kits where the change takes place. Um, and the reason is that it's basically, um, on a certain date, a couple months ago, we started manufacturing parts as as needed it's an it's a demand driven part manufacturing process um so we started manufacturing parts with the final sized holes whereas the parts that are already on the shelf have don't have the final size holes and so when people are getting kits starting not too long ago then uh those kits w uh, can contain both uh final size hole parts as well as parts that that were made uh prior to us making the change to punching those final size holes. So what we did was on the shelf, before we put any final size parts on the shelf, uh, we had a whole bunch of people come in with a bunch of orange markers, orange sharp okay. markers, and they started putting orange marks on all the labels that are on all those parts. And hopefully we got them all, <laughs> but you know, it's, I'm, I'm sure we missed a couple here and there. Uh, it's a lot of parts uh, and it's a big warehouse. Uh, but basically, and we started putting a little, uh, uh, a one sheet sort of explanation, piece of paper, color, color pictures on it that says, you know, if you, if you have parts that have the orange mark on it, then they're not final size holes. If it doesn't have the orange mark, there's a good chance that it's, that it does have final size holes. The way you check that is you just, if it's a number 40 hole, just take a number 40 bit on the on the back end not the cutting side but the back end stick it in there if it goes in then you know it's a final size hole and if it doesn't then you know it's not um that's a you know it's not rocket science you know it's just, <laughs> just building airplanes so you know um but that's that's a good way to check um so the Great. label if the label has an orange mark on it then it's not a final size hole that's that's pretty much guaranteed so, people so but are, that's good to know that you already have some of these final size parts they're already shipping out people can already expect to see them in their kits I people think have been receiving really, them now people have been receiving them for a couple of months 
Oh, great. That's uh, wonderful. A month, a month or more. Yeah, that's been doing so. I know because I see it on Facebook and places where people are posting pictures of things in Vans Air Force where it's like, hey, I got orange labels. <laughs> and I got ones without orange labels, and they're really excited about the ones without the orange labels on them. So, oh, so that's it's, really it's, cool. It's happening. Um, we anticipate that this will all probably change over the stock based on forecasting and orders and demand is it'll change over sometime probably early next year. So early 2021, somewhere in oh, that great. time frame is when we expect that. Um, and by early, I don't mean January. So uh, <laughs> it's not wishful early, it's realistic early. So in the first half of 2021, first quarter to first half, I imagine that all of that stock will be uh, depleted and we'll be rolling at that point in time, all the new stock that's coming in and going out will have final size holes in it. And a lot of the parts that will be before that. So sometime in early, again, first half of 2021 is when it is that you're thinking that eventually all of those RV10 parts that are getting shipped out will now be the final sized parts yeah, give, for give any of the kids. That's approximately the time frame that we're looking at. So I had a really great question that I saw from a follower on Instagram that I thought was it was definitely worth asking okay. that knowing that you're not doing it where because as you mentioned you don't print out each piece for a individual kit and then box it you print out multiple pieces um, of a particular component and then stack them so that they can get um, provided as needed or for you know people who have oopsies who need to right. reorder pieces <laughs> but the, the question they asked I thought was really good is knowing that you're doing these different pieces as they're needed is there for someone who's doing an entire slow build like we are doing where they're building their own wings and their own fuselage yeah. right now does it look like the fuselage kit or the wing kit happens to have more of the final size components presently or that looking at the stock that you have available which one might be have more of those final size pieces in it yeah, so I, if I they're trying to decide you know it, it might help them knowing they will help them time wise to have more of those final size bits is is there one perhaps that they should be ordering before the other if that's something that they're interested in uh the the best answer i can give is no um i don't okay. know the stock is is always changing um, and determining that is a fairly complex process. And, you know, we may do is we're simply going to be sending parts, some of which are and some of which aren't. The percentage of the number of parts as that phase process, phasing in process goes on will increase. Um, but we don't really have the ability to tell people which kits when. One thing that we will do, that I'll do, is I'll make sure that, you know, once we get to the point where we're, we no longer have those parts on the shelf, we'll probably say something about that. We've completed the transition <laughs> process. Um, but uh, honestly, we would spend a lot of time and therefore expense that has to go into kits, uh, constantly checking that inventory and answering questions if, if we followed that process. And um, the fact of the matter is, is that there's a lot of RV10 kit orders coming in. And if somebody really 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 wants to doesn't want to start until that happens then they're gonna have to wait um and you know that's okay you know i i i think <laughs> that you'll end up waiting more time than you would save uh you do that you know um kit refinements and improvements are things that are important to us and we do them um but this is a good example of one that kind of happens over time and so you know and as it happens then the, it's a gradual process of of getting the new parts in and and making them available you mentioned time just now, and I know that's another question that's come up from people because as you described and anyone who's watched some of our videos might know, the time it takes putting some of these components together, I'm thinking especially of the tail cone where you assemble the entire thing to do all of the match drilling and then tear it all apart, which is the most disheartening part, I think, of the tail cone, the old M kit build <laughs> was tearing it down again. Just remember this is a labor of pieces. love. <laughs> it is. <laughs> But um, the, the question I think that people have is kind of how much time are you guys anticipating that this might save people by not having to assemble everything twice, once for the match drilling, like you said, then tearing it apart, doing all of the deburring and dimpling, and then reassembling it for final riveting? Yeah, I, um, I don't have an exact number for that. I think, you know, um, that 
it's it's a it's a significant enough amount of time to say it's meaningful um you know I, whether it's 100 hours for somebody or 40 hours or 200 hours really depends on how quick they work um and anytime that we talk about time estimates during a project like this um it's a it's a highly variable number depending on the person who's doing the building um, but you know, the process of putting it together, taking it apart, deburring it on a tail cone is, I mean, there's definitely dozens of hours or at least tens of hours involved in doing <laughs> that, that are involved in the in-between steps. Right. So that's time that's going to be saved. If I remember correctly, I think when Ryan was with us, he was saying it might save about like 15% of the build time, like you're saying, it, it kind of varies in terms of number of hours depending on how people do everything. This is why you have people who can build it in a little over a year and others where it might take several right. years. So not necessarily like an hour amount of time, but I think he was saying maybe about 15 to 20% of your time based on not having to do with again some of the parts assembling it twice so i think, so I, I think if i remember correctly that's i think in said. really round numbers on par that might be a reasonable conclusion to come to a perfectly reasonable conclusion to come to but again it can be highly variable right because um some people will spend all the lights are changing on me some people will spend <laughs> a lot of time deburring um and Ve and very lightly and very carefully spend a whole lot of time doing that, uh, whereas other people are just faster at it. So again, percentages of time, it really varies from person to person. What we can say for certain is that no matter who's building the airplane, it does save time. There's no doubt about <laughs> that. There is nobody that will not see some time savings that comes out of the fact that the holes are final sized. <laughs> which is uh, really wonderful news. I think it's going to be really yeah. cool. Um, the next question then that ties into that with some of the time savings, I know that people have asked about, does this mean that quick build kits will be completed faster right. because of the time savings also than for the people on your end who are helping to put those components? Yeah. Together? I think the simple answer to that is no. Uh, the okay. Um, not it, it won't affect the delivery time frame for quick build kits. It will reduce the number of steps that they have to follow the team of people that does the RV10 quick builds, right? Um, that that will be affected, um, but that is not something in the process, the entire process of quick build kits, from parts to shipping to that team to them doing a build, to it getting into a container and for getting back here and us doing QA and then us shipping it to you, right? Um, that, uh, there's many stop, stopping points and transition points in there that are actually more what de determine that schedule um, it, more so than whether they have to upsize the holes. Um, so um, ba based on based on the staging that happens in the process of moving those along the way, while it's fairly efficient, it's not so absolutely fast that um, that, that the whole size is going to change. I, I don't think we'll see a change. Okay, because of the extra, like you said, it's not just about building all the pieces. It's about the extra steps that go along the way, especially with, again, like your, um, your inspections that take place afterwards. Well, and those parts spend a lot of time in transit between our factory and the quick builds folks, right? Um, and... Uh, so the percentage of time represented by uh, drilling up the holes by people that do it all the time and are really fast and good at it uh, <laughs> is, is a, a, a minuscule part of the overall quick build life cycle, I guess would be the way to explain it. For a builder, good to know. For a builder the life cycle is, is significantly shorter. There's not shipping there, shipping back, uh, staging, you know, 10 airplanes worth, 10 or 20 RV-10 airplanes worth of parts all going at the same time, <laughs> prepping them all at the same time. So there's a whole different process that people go through in terms of a mass assembly. You know, the upsizing, the deburring and all that is done in, in a whole different scale, you know, mass assembly and deburring type of things. Whereas for the builder that's building one airplane, it's a different story. So for a builder that's building the one airplane, then the relative uh, impact of this change is greater than it is on, on the quick build team. 
Good explanation. Thank you. Yep. And then um, another question that's come up is about the price. Since you're now going to, you've had to do this different process now to get it to where you have these right. final sized holes, is that going to impact the price of the kits at all? Not at all. So it's uh, simply a kit change. It's an improvement. Uh, it's not an option. It just is what it is. Uh, and uh, it's in this particular change, uh, some changes some changes are options, so they, they will affect price because it's it's a major change. Um, this is a significant change, but um, the material is the same material. The machines are the same machines. Uh, the time that it takes to make it is exactly the same amount of time as just tooling yeah, changes. Wow. Um, so it doesn't take us any additional operating cost and time. There was cost associated with making the change itself, but once the change has been made, uh, the costs of uh, production and warehousing and shipping, stocking and shipping and all those things are, are identical. That didn't change. So there's no change to the kit price uh, as a result of making the change. It's just a, it's just a you're welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we're thank you. This kind of thing. That's, that's the way it is. I mean, we, we annually, approximately annually adjust kit prices because material costs change and, you know, labor costs sure. change. It's just business type stuff. But um, we do the best we can to keep it, keep it as low as we can and, and this is an example of just something that we just decided to do. For the that's really nice. That's, that's great that you guys were able to keep the price the same while still now providing this really big improvement. Uh, I think, again, from from our experience, that this is going to be really nice to have these final sized holes. I'm, yeah. you know, maybe a little bit jealous <laughs> that none of my parts came this way, but <laughs> I'm really happy for the other people because I think this is going to be something that... Um, it's it's great because it's competitive with some other four seater kits that are out there, and I think it's really great to take a little bit of the stress out of the equation with some people who are concerned about the time that it's going to take, knowing that it is going to provide a, a time savings. Um, I think I think that's going to be really huge. Well, you know, over over time we've gone from you take the RV three from nineteen seventy to seventy three time frame, right when it was first van first built the first one, and then people said, I want one. Uh, <laughs> but when they wanted one, they got some hand-drawn plans, sh big sheets, plans, not a book, plans, uh, and and uh, went out and bought metal and started to build an airplane. And then it was like, you know, well, we'll build some of the, the core structural parts for you, but you got to do the rest. You know, they're cutting out parts and, and cutting out lightning holes oh, and stamping man. things and bending your own ribs, making your own core <laughs> blocks. Holes didn't come into the equation. The ho there was, <laughs> nobody even thought about holes until you're way down the road on a build. Now oh, man. you're getting parts that are basically finished parts. So as opposed to a fabrication project, it's really gone full scale toward an assembly project now, right? So the, the relative amount of work. So what's funny is you'll have RV3 and 4 and 6 builders that are out there and they're saying, <laughs> and they're saying, What's the big deal? <laughs> oh, they so, deserve a ton of respect in my book for, for doing that. You want to talk about labor of love, 100% respect yeah, for, for sure. the fellas doing that and ladies. But it's um, but it's all it's all relative, right? So, um, you know, one of the things that we recognize and that is, you know, is important to us is that, um, and it's always been a goal at Vans Aircraft, which is to build... I don't know, I kind of say build uncommonly cool airplanes for, for the common folk, right? So, and the idea is that is to make it accessible, make it possible, make it affordable, um, and do the best we can to keep, you know, a relatively complex thing as cost effective as possible. But to be able to get it out there to where people have the option and the opportunity to do this if they choose to do it. I mean, that's that's what it's all about, right? And part of doing that is making it so that it's not so uh, really, really difficult to build a kit, uh, you know, a la RV3 style. Um, <laughs> and, and we've gone through a whole series of cycles, you know, through the 7, 8, 9 process, early 10 stuff. 10 is kind of this hybrid that's now coming into the, the you know, finishing up parts with match to a final size. But the 12 and the 14 have that. Right. And so kind of bringing the 10 into that fold um, opens it up, opens up the possibilities and makes it more approachable for even more people. And that's that's what we're here to do. 
You'd mentioned with the plans for the RV3, and so that's another question I've seen. Are there going to be new plans now for the RV10? No. Is that going to be necessary with the changes? No. Again, the parts are the same parts. The only difference is whether you have to upsize the hole. That's the only difference. Um, the parts are interchangeable. That's another question that I know I've received. So, like, uh, if you are building your fuselage, your wings, whatever you're building, right, and you – your parts that you received when you started building are uh, undersized holes, not the final size holes, right? And then yeah. you, you know, bugger up a part, you need a new part, so you order the part. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> no, happens to me, I can tell you. Uh, oh, yeah, it definitely happens over here, too. <laughs> I'm the worst owner in that regard. So, But we ship you a part, and it has final size holes in it. So now you have final size holes where your original part had had not quite final size holes, the undersized holes, uh, mm -hmm. it'll absolutely work. Uh, and if you need to drill them together, you can do that. In fact, you can take the part that has the undersized holes, upsize them, and then put it all together and click out. It'll work just fine. Uh, so that's a, that's a good question that's also come up then, um, is that would you, if you have the now the mixed bag of the not final sized holes and the final size holes yep. would you still want to go ahead and assemble everything to do the match drilling between the final size hole part yeah to do the final the size final drilling. size hole part so you can you can drill you can size up the hole in the individual piece if you want to and then put it together okay um and that's fine the other thing you can do is you is, is you can put it together and drill i i i would suggest i i would I'll say again what I said earlier, which I would suggest to people that you use a reamer rather than a jobber bit when it comes to doing final hole drilling, right? And final size hole drilling. The reason is is that it's simply a much cleaner result uh, and, okay. and more exact. A reamer, you're going to get a round hole. You go and drill a hole with a jobber bit, you're, and you look at it closely with a magnifying glass. It's not a round hole, right? It's it's got a little odd shape to it um, on the edges and stuff like that. So reamers cost more, and they're worth it. Uh, and you're, you're going to get a better <laughs> result. Um, but Well, that's a really good tip. Over, But uh, I wouldn't overanalyze the hole upsizing. It, it's, again, it ain't rocket science here. We're talking about, you know, ramers and, and uh, electric drills and, and taking a hole that needs just a teeny tiny bit shaved off of it, and the ramer will help you do that, and then it'll all go together. It'll be just fine. And I want to make sure to mention at this part the comment that Ryan shared. Um, it was the wonderful builder tip that I, it, it was just kind of a little bit mind blowing to to think about where the concern was. You know, talking about if we were match drilling the final size with the the undersized part, yep. um, and if you had a slight enlargement of the hole right. where he said if you find your, and not just in that situation but he said in others if you find yourself where you've drilled the hole and it's a little bit big for like say you have a three rivet in there um, but it's not so bad that necessarily you should have to upsize it and right. go to a four right. that he talked about getting a slightly longer rivet than was called for and slightly compressing it, say like in the squeezer. Pre-squeeze pre, pre it because pre -squeeze you start squeeze it. it, then that diameter starts to expand. To fatten it up a little so, bit to then have it be that nice fit and then putting it in there and then setting the rivet. You're basically, and I thought that was a great tip. Well, you're basically <laughs> making your own oops rivet. Right, so an oops. I like rivet, that. That was an oops rivets. Yeah, I like an oop, that. <laughs> an oops rivets a thing, right? That's like a, a number four shank or a size four shank with a size three head on the top. There's an oops rivet, right? And you buy them that way, and that's what they're made for, right? So oh, the, very cool. So the head looks looks right, but the hole underneath is actually larger. So oh, no, that's you don't funny. want to use. I didn't. I actually didn't those know those. about those. That's yeah. really cool. Now you know it's an oops rivet, but you would <laughs> you do that if you needed to go to a size four <laughs> hole. Right from a size from a three hole, so mm -hmm. um, three thirty seconds to four thirty seconds. So, but but if you're doing uh, your your number three hole hole or your number forty hole, right, is just a little bit large, then pre squeezing it like that really does work pretty well. I thought it was a really great tip. Uh, it, it it just really made a lot of sense when he yeah. said it, and I just, it's definitely something I'm going to keep in the back of my mind for yep. whenever if that ever happens to pop up. So another question that um, has with uh, any possible
possible match drilling that might come up with these final size kits. So okay. what I'm thinking about is the Longerons with the tail cone or some of the J channels, then they go in the uh, with the wing skins or with the tail cone as well, where these are components that arrive without any holes in them, but now final sized um, holes in the other pieces. So are, are we still going to have match drilling there or how is this going to work out? Yeah, that doesn't change. Any parts that that have not had holes in them previously don't change. Okay. So match drilling where you're actually taking a, a punched hole in a sheet metal part, using that as your template, your drill template or guide, if you will, to to drill through a, a piece of angle or something that's not sheet metal and not pre-punched, that hasn't changed. What's changed is that that part that you're using as the drill guide has a final size hole in it. That's that's the only real difference. Okay. Uh, is that, that hole size has changed, but but there's not new holes in previously have holes. It's probably the simplest way to answer the question. Is there any goal to eventually have it where all of the components might arrive with the holes in them or no? Not at this time because we can't pre-punch those parts. Okay. Uh, and and uh, and the parts already exist. So, and they do need to be drilled in place in some of those cases, and that's what you're doing. You're, you're match drilling through one hole, match the hole into the, into the underlying structure um, in place, and that's, that's really the design. Now, future airplane designs, because of some of the new uh, technology and manufacturing we have, like CN, a couple of CNC mills and, and what have you, um, might allow us in the future, there might be parts that we actually do have matched holes in parts that are not punched sheet metal. But for the RV-10, that's not the case. Uh, and there's no plan to do that. There's really no meaningful or realistic way to do that. Uh, it's, um, it's, it's just part of the way the airplane is built. You, know, is okay. that you, do, you use, the, use it as a template, and, and from that, that's your drill guide through which you're drilling through the substructure. Um, one last question is... I've heard kind of why now, I guess, with the, the RV-10 being final sized, um, is it a plan to have it on all of the different planes? Why was it not there before? I think Ryan kind of had touched on it the last time we talked, yeah. but I didn't. I want to give you a chance, I guess, to answer that question and we can um, kind of get get that answer out there about why it's now suddenly uh, an option that you are able to provide. Well, there's a variety of reasons. Um, sorry, sorry for the airplane noises here or the airport noises. It happens. Uh, <laughs> so, things, right? Um, uh, the RV-10 is uh, a very popular airplane kit. So making the changes for people that are buying an airplane kit that's now, the RV-14 and the RV-10 recently are sort of vying back and forth for the number one spot for kits that are being <laughs> sold. And, you know, you've got the, the, the 8 and the 7 and the 9 and the 12. They're all really close behind, but those two kind of go back and forth. The RV-10 is also a sig significant project. So when you're doing that project, shaving time off of that is pretty meaningful. Um, and from a computer-aided design, you know, SolidWorks and, and – the computer design capabilities that we have, uh, that aircraft is modeled. And so because it's modeled, we have the ability to produce the parts reliably and consistently and with the level of precision necessary to do final size match holes. The older kits, and as you go further back in time, they're not modeled that way and you don't have that capability. And so we would have to be to basically rework the entire kit design into SolidWorks. And you're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of hours worth of work and a lot of uh, trial and error and getting things done and moving that out. There, there are some examples of where some of that has been done in the past. The RV-8, there's actually been two RV-8 kits. Um, there was uh, the fuselage kit specifically. There's the pre-punched fuselage, which has been delivered since about 2006-ish, I believe, um, before my time. Um, <laughs> and then there's the version of the RV-8 fuselage that I have, which was actually built prior to that. And so, and while it does come with some holes in it, there's more drilling and it's not the pre-punched fuselage as it's, as it's referred to, um, that you get, um, if you have bought an RV-8, you know, from 2006 onwards. And so we tend to evolve moving forward, 
Um, this is an ex a relatively lightweight example. I mean, there's certainly a lot of time and effort and val validation and checks that go into doing this with the RV10. But in the grand scheme of things, it's something that you can, the bread box is not massive, right? It's a reasonably sized box that we can, the scope is not huge. So we're able, we're able to do that. Um, the, so if the question is, are we going to go back and redo all the other kits? Uh, we don't have plans to do that right now. And I mean, could it ever happen? I'm never going to say never. Um, but you know, we strike a balance between uh, sustained engineering, which is, you know, kind of maintaining the existing products, uh, sustained and design engineering, which is maybe making this kind of change to previous products. But then we also have, you know, maintaining the fleet, but then we're also, you know, what are we going to do next and the next airplane design? And, and so we have to strike the balance between those things. And, you know, Ryan, our chief engineer and the engineering team, they, they do a fine job of doing that. Uh, having to make real-time decisions and priorities and, and figuring out what we're doing now, what we're doing next week, and what we're doing next month and next year, uh, you know, just to keep the business moving. And, of course, there's also the fact that, you know, we're a business um, and talked earlier about, you know, trying to make sure that we can make things um, approachable and affordable for, for common folk, if you will, to be able to do this really cool thing and build an airplane. Um, I mean, that's how I got into it. And I got excited about it. And now I'm doing this, talking to you. Same. So, I guess I tricked them. <laughs> but, uh, but fake it till you make it. That's that's what we say in this industry, right? So, but. Well, and um, I think if I remember correctly, too, one of the things that Ryan mentioned um, when we were talking the last time is that part of it does have to do with the um the 51 percent rule and some different changes that might take place there sure. with what they are considering when they are awarding um points for the work that's being done and that before where actually drilling all of the holes might have gotten you more more points or to go towards your 51%. Yeah, the 51% versus now. isn't 51% of the time. It's not 51% of the holes. It's 51% of things per a list where things are scored and ranked. Uh, the FAA does, and, and that's published online. You can find it. Um, the the standard is, and, and so they come through and do an assessment where they look at our quick build kit, our standard build kit. Uh, the quick build kit is where you're approaching the line, and so that's where you're really got to do the, the deep assessment, you know, does it still meet the 51% rule? What's the work that's done? And there's, you know, certainly drilling holes and dimpling things and, you know, different steps along the way. Um, if we do too much of that for you, then it no longer meets the 51% rule, and therefore it's no longer an experimental amateur-built airplane. Um, probably the one airplane that's really close to the line is the RV-12IS, right, which is an ELSA airplane. Um, and we don't sell it as a quick build kit. Uh, and if you just buy all the parts and put it together, it meets the 51% rule. If you want to build it as an experimental amateur build airplane, if you're building it as an experimental light sport airplane, different licensing, different certification, then uh, the 51% rule doesn't apply. So that's an example. But for the RV-10, the 51% rule, EAB is the only option. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And so the 51% rule is, is pretty important. And I think that's where he was saying that some of the um, considerations were changing a little bit in terms of how much credit you got for doing the drilling um, before and that now it's, I guess, actually doing the drilling isn't so important in their considerations for how much like credit that gets you towards your 51%. Well, I know the rules have changed at least once uh, and there are a set of changes that are likely forthcoming. Uh, related to, you know, what's required from a person who's building an airplane manufacturing-wise and just some general changes to the FAA standards for uh, experimental aircraft and licensing and applicability and all that kind of stuff. And that, But that's forthcoming and not yet well-defined. Um, but uh, nothing has changed recently. Okay. Um, so, you know, everything that's been in place for the last few years remains in place uh, and and is not different now. Okay. Um, and last question I have to ask, because I know people are always curious, anything you can share about the RV-15? Uh, my short answer would be no. <laughs> I had to ask. Uh, it's okay. You can ask. <laughs> the, uh, uh, will there be an RV-15? Yes. Uh, what will it be? I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. We're friends yeah. here. <laughs> Uh, I just say that. That's what everyone says. Anyway. Um, the uh, you know uh, these things take time. 
Um, you know, I think we have a history of taking our time and doing things at the time that makes the most sense. And importantly, it needs to be right. It needs to be good. Right. And um, so, uh, you know, it'll happen eventually. And whenever it happens, I think people will be excited about it. And um, that seems to happen with every RV model. Right. So that's not exactly a shocker statement, I would hope. No, um, y'all make great plays. So, well, Greg, yeah. thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and talk with me again. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule. I think that these uh, answers are hopefully going to clear up a lot of questions that people have had about the new um, final size RV 10 kits that are going to be available. And, I'm just mostly jealous that it's not going to apply to, to our kits. But, well, Christine, um, if you really, really want to do it, you can just order a bunch of parts, take your old parts off, and put these ones on. <laughs> no, I would, I would cry. <laughs> I'd suggest you just keep working on that fuselage. That was cool. I saw the picture you had the other day. Thanks, with yeah. fuselage sections put together and that bottom, bottom skin and standing up on its end, it's like it turned into something huge for you, so that's pretty cool. Oh, it, it feels like uh, it's like that uh, little line from Anchorman. Well, that escalated quickly, <laughs> so <laughs> it exactly feels like it went from some ribs and sitting there on the table to now it's huge, and you're really starting to realize this is the bottom of the plant. Yeah, so. it's starting to look like, like an airplane. <laughs> yeah, you, that's one of, the, one of those moments where you're kind of like, oh. <laughs> and it went and it goes from it goes from and oh, that's kind of neat to wow like as soon as you do it which is those moments are pretty cool it really when you put is. the tail when you put the tail together and you put it all together and you hook it up to the controls and that elevator starts moving up and down <laughs> That'll be one of those moments for you, too. But, oh, you know, I can't you'll, wait. You'll get there pretty soon. So I'm really, really excited about all of it. I, I, I just love the build. So in case anybody hadn't realized that by now. So, <laughs> well, thank yeah, you. You're... Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and, and chat. I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank yeah. you to everybody out there for being so patient. I'm very sorry, again, about the problems with the live stream. But I... I'm really glad to be able to get this information out there to you. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have and you're considering purchasing your own RV10 or another RV model, do consider going to my website, plainlady.com slash referral. You can get the van's referral form there and just print it out with your information and send it in. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help support my channel. And uh, if you are interested, also for the fall and winter, we now have Plain Lady, the Why Buy Plain you can build them long sleeve sweatshirt and hoodies available for the cold weather so you I can get all of those <laughs> the hoodies are great they're very comfortable i have the t-shirt but i might need the hoodie yes I I love that. So um, those are all available on plainlady.com. They connect you to the link on Amazon. And anyone who is Amazon Prime, you will get the free Prime shipping. So thank you again, Greg. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for all of your patience. And I hope that this has helped answer some of your questions about the new RV head kits. <laughs> <laughs>